My name is Amit Ahuja. I am I have actually just finished my PhD in political science here at the University of Michigan. And now I am uh, off to uh, a position of assistant professor at the University of California in Santa Barbara. I'm Laura Wernick. I'm in the joint doctoral program in social work and political science. And while I was here, I also did the women's studies certificate. My name is Julia Shapiro. I'm in uh, classical uh, studies. I primarily focus on fourth century Athens, um, gender studies and religion. Now, I've used quite a few services here uh, at uh, at University of Michigan, and you know they range from the services that relate directly to my work, and then others that uh, are more closely related to my my living in Ann Arbor. For my work, I have actually turned to the offices or the Office of the Services for Students with Disabilities, which is SSD. Uh, and SSD has been very helpful in uh, getting my getting me uh, help with you know readings. Uh, because the work that I, you know, I, I need my readings to be scanned into a computer, and SSD has been is, has been absolutely phenomenal in terms of uh, getting the readings scanned and getting them to me on time. Um, they've also helped me with uh, getting access to technology, so things like uh, screen reading software, uh, other supported software, whether it's to do with statistics and, and other stuff. So in, in that sense, it's it's I think it's it's uh, a, a great resource on campus. But also, I think it's one of the best offices functional in this country today. It's just a, a really, really good resource. Um, in addition to that, Ann Arbor just has a lot of good public services, um, which are you know, useful for everybody. But um, I especially enjoyed things like you know, the bus system here. Um, you know, as, as somebody who's blind, I don't drive. So the bus system here has been absolutely fantastic in terms of you know, getting around. I think that the experiences here are somewhat different for people who have visible disabilities as opposed to invisible disabilities. As a result, I would highly recommend you know, having an early meeting uh, with the, someone from the Office of Disabilities and somebody relatively high up in your department um, who's in a position of decision making to sit down and talk about the implications of having this particular disability. Another thing that I would, I would talk about is you know, when you walk in, walk in with your head up high. It's, I think it's hard for people with disabilities to ask for what you want in a way that sounds good, like you're capable and you can do this and you need some help and here's what you need. And I think that the best way to do it is to come to the faculty member, work out what you want, and then say, I have this problem. Oh, look, I have a solution to this problem. Oh, look, you didn't even have to think about it. You just say yes, and then I go away, and it's all good. CRLT, the Center for Research and Learning and Teaching, provides a, a tutor for teachers, basically. It's unconnected with the department. I would say that for, the first, for a GSI with a disability, get help from CRLT. Get a lot of help from CRLT. Get like three visits from them in a semester, the first semester. They're really helpful, and they will tutor you in how to teach. You know, this is a public university, and it uh, takes its responsibility towards the disabled very seriously. But I think before before coming in, I think there is also something to be said about um, you know preparing for for entering a program. And anyone with a disability or with certain specific needs needs to do their homework of early and 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 get that information to their particular department and or people they'd be working with as early as possible. Um, I think these are conversations which are best held after being accepted into the program. Uh, but once you are accepted into the program, I think it's, it's absolutely vital that uh, you get this information to your department as early as possible. I think what also is very helpful is just generally preparing yourself in terms of what you need to do to be able to live successfully in Ann Arbor. Because we, we often look at the university, uh, when we look at university life, we look at only the department, our work life. But I think it's all equally important to look at issues related to day-to-day -day living. And the one thing you want to avoid as somebody who's disabled is isolation. Uh, that's, that's really important to be, you know, be, be mindful of that. And, and finally, uh, you know, treat yourself. I think it's really important to understand that uh, this is a very large university community. And, uh, and, and, and it's important to sort of be, become a part of that community, to, to embrace that community. And I think that's really the best way uh, in terms of uh, 
you know, in terms of your student life here, to to actually uh, the, to sort of make the disability disappear. Because in some ways, what you are trying to do as a as, as a graduate student or as an undergraduate student here is to to develop a different kind of an identity. Uh, I've always personally believed that disability is not my primary identity, and I also happen to think that a lot of disabled people feel similarly. And uh, the university gives you a very good opportunity to develop multiple identities, uh, including a professional one, while you're here.